Right everyone, so today this huge book, which was a long time in the acquiring, Pamela Coleman Smith, The Untold Story. I bought it and it didn't turn up so I had to buy it again. It says it's by Stuart Kaplan with Mary Kay Greer, Elizabeth Foley O'Connor and Melinda Boy Parsons. Actually, it's not by Stuart Kaplan. It features the collection of Pamela Coleman Smith memorabilia, um, a very good collection collected by Stuart Kaplan, but he doesn't actually uh, write more than about one page in the book. The job of writing the book is left to the three ladies, but you know, he's the publisher, so he might as well take the credit. In a nutshell, this is um, an extremely, extremely nicely produced coffee table book. The collection of Pamela stuff is really very, very good, and it's probably, well, it's certainly the best collection in the world. Don't expect too much from the text. It's called Pamela Coleman Smith, the untold story and by the end of reading this book uh, that's exactly what it is uh, it is an untold story the story isn't really told i think to be fair there is very very little documentary evidence about the life of pamela coleman smith even though she had famous friends and tarot scholarship being what it is and tarot being a sort of despised subject you know it's not you know, it's not geography or sociology, is it? Um, or even history. Or at least it's a despised <laughs> corner of history. There hasn't been a lot of research done. I have now read three books about Pamela Common Smith, PCS, including this one, and it was a slightly demoralising experience. I, I wanted to find out about the life of Pamela Common Smith, and I feel I haven't. On the plus side, in this book, you see a lot of her work. You see what she left behind. And I think the work speaks much louder than the very uh, sketchy biographical stuff that these uh, Pamela books tend to contain. Let, let's start positively. Let's, let's have a look at, at the book. Thankfully, it's half the book. It's this section is just like um, an exhibition catalogue. It's just reproductions of Pamela's work. So what do we get? We get very nice fin de siècle illustrative uh, stuff. There's a, a Japanese influence. There's sort of Victorian medievalism, isn't there? There's the influence of a, of a guy called um, Marcus Ward, who was known for his sort of faux medieval uh, illustrations. You get the impression of someone who was capable of very nice work and was also capable of, of uh, very sketchy throwaway work. And I think anyone who knows the Rider Waite Smith tarot would probably agree that it's a combination of both those two things. I think she was born to illustrate the, you know, the definitive tarot pack because her style is, is it's flat, it's iconic, it's very good, very, very good with lines, it's got very strong lines. And actually even her, her choice of colour, which, you know, some modern people don't like. I don't like the yellows. Don't like the yellows. <laughs> but her colours were part of her practice. They, they came, they, in a sense, they came from her, her interest in, in Japanese prints. These flat blocks of colour that she has in her cards and in a lot of her illustrations. These unusual yellow skies. That didn't happen by mistake. That was all part of her, her project. We read in the biographies that uh, she went to art school, but she either she was kicked out or she left or she ran out of money, but she didn't get a very good re uh, school report from her professors uh, when she left. They said Pamela's style hasn't really changed <laughs> in the years uh, that she's been with us and um, she's still doing exactly what she wants to do. So you get the impression of someone who's very willful and very intuitive and um, not always entirely focused. And again, I think what's so great about the, her commission to do these tarot cards, and we know she wasn't very well paid and she was rushed and so forth, but it did focus her. It, it, it was something that must have involved an immense amount of concentration. And I think, I think that really was, was quite a, a, a good thing. I've heard people comment that the tarot cards are not her best work. They're a bit cartoon-like, they're a bit flat. They've got some, you know, some rushed bits. And it, it is true, they do have rushed corners. But I think they 
are very good. I, I think what, what's, what's interesting about them is that it's very difficult to improve on the RWS. And there is, you know, a gazillion uh, graphic designers and illustrators and artists in the world. Very, very few of them actually managed to make a better deck of tarot cards. I mean, Lady Frida Harris, you know, she is sort of a better or more, uh, you know, ooh la la artist than Pamela. But I don't think the Thoth deck is better at all. I think it's um, not very easy to look at. You get the impression of someone who was very engaged and very passionate and quite independent. She, she had a, a broadsheet, a magazine called A Broadsheet that she published with, with Jack Yates. And then when that um, folded, she brought out a, another a zine, as it were, called The Green Sheaf. And what's great is you get lots of facsimiles of this stuff in the book. She was a, a suffragette and she contributed anonymous graphics for the suffragette movement. She remained single. She didn't marry. Um, she kept her independence and it was difficult for her. We know all this stuff. I'm going to make another video about, you know, um, uh, the issue of Pamela Coleman Smith. You know, was she of mixed race? Was she a lesbian? Is she suitable as a sort of a feminist icon, a sort of a, as the Frida Kahlo of the tarot world? I think that's a different subject. I'd just like to talk about this book for now so that you have it in a nutshell, you know, should you buy it or not. There are three sections of, of text. There's um, Pamela's Life by Elizabeth Foley O'Connor. And Elizabeth Foley O'Connor has also written a book about Pamela, which is um, out of print. It costs like 100 50 pounds on, on um, Amazon at the moment, a paperback. And then there's um, a section by Melinda Boyd Parsons called Influences and Expression in the Rider Waite deck. And then there's Pamela's Legacy by Mary Kay Greer. Don't expect fireworks, don't expect anything particularly exciting. I found the section on Pamela's life quite dull. I mean, one really had to grind one's way through it. The problem with a Pamela Colin Smith biographer is that there's so little evidence, you have to speculate all the time. And did this happen? Did that happen? And it's not very gripping reading. The, the chapter by Melinda Boyd Parsons, Influences and Expression, at least that is more factual. You know, um, Melinda Boyd Parsons links up Pamela to other artists and other movements and so forth. And, and that's quite, that's quite self-evident and there's good illustrations and, and it's readable, but it's also kind of boring. Then at the end of the book, you breathe a huge sigh of relief because there is a, a section by Mary Kay Greer called Pamela's Legacy. And when you get to this section, it's like, thank God, here's a writer who is engaging and, and interesting and elegant. And I appreciate Mary Kay Greer as a, a, a cultured person and um, a tireless tarot uh, ambassador and, um, and a good writer. But... I do have something to say. I was a sort of outside the tarot world for many decades. I was just a reader. I didn't research it at all, didn't read about it. And then since the pandemic, I've been, I've been reading and sort of educating myself, as they say. And it's clear that there is a kind of like, there is a coterie around um, uh, Stuart Kaplan, who I think has passed away, and US game system. There's this coterie of people who all uh, seem to know each other and publish books and then uh, Stuart Kaplan would uh, bring out lots of tarot decks on US game system and every time a tarot deck came out or it seemed every time a tarot deck came out there would be a little white book and at the front of the little white book there would be a testimonial from Mary Kay Greer saying what a beautiful tarot deck this is and then Mary Kay Greer would write testimonials on the back of Rachel Pollack's books and vice versa and um, it, it, it seems like a sort of like a self-contained sort of Tarot Academy. That's fair enough, but uh, what I want to point out to you is that there, there is life outside of this US Game Systems Academy. And I even question uh, quite how in-depth the knowledge and the research and the scholarship is in a book like this. I mean, one would expect it to be, you know, pretty definitive. And I just want to comment on the Mary Kay Greer section because, I mean, it is the best section. It's the, the only really well-written section in the book. Mary Kay Greer, you know, this, this, the, queen of, the queen of modern tarot in a way, uh, along with Rachel Pollack. I just want to question her beliefs and her assumptions 
questions about the Rider Waite Smith, you know, this thing, this Bible that we all have, this deck, and her beliefs and her assumptions about Pamela Coleman Smith. She says that Pamela, you know, worked with A.E. Waite, but she wouldn't have had access to the Golden Dawn's material, the Golden Dawn's research materials, because she wasn't a member of the inner order of the Golden Dawn. So Mary Kay Career is, is quite clear that anything in the Rider Waite Smith was either spoon-fed to her by A.E. Waite, and I think probably a lot of it was, or it was just kind of like Pamela improvising. And um, later on in the book, she's got a section called The Rider Waite Deck as Experienced by Tarot Readers, and she says, Some tarot readers complain that Pamela's scenes sentimentally dramatise what had originally been the unillustrated pips of the earlier and still current Italian and Spanish decks. Her pictorial scenes in the minor arcana are seen as paradoxically both limiting and broadening card meanings, resulting in two particular storylines, or a too broad whatever-you-see-in-the-picture approach. So in other words, uh, Pamela is just throwing in implied meanings which don't have a precedent and uh, weren't because she had access to Golden Dawn um, records and documents and, and, and systems. I'll, I'll read a bit more because this is very interesting. As an example, while the Two of Pentacles is described by weight as gaiety, news and agitation, it is often seen via Pamela's design as juggling two or more situations in one's life. And so she, she's saying that Pamela made up this idea of juggling. She just threw it in because she felt like it. And that's actually not true. If you look at Mystical Origins of the Tarot by Paul Hooson, which is quite a scholarly work, it's not the most scholarly work, but it's up there, you can read about uh, the meanings that tarot cards had before A.E. Wade, like in the 18th century, and indeed in, in the Golden Dawn. So um, the Two of Pentacles, Taylor has it meaning embarrassment, embroilment, entwinement. A Mothers of the Golden Dawn has it meaning embarrassment, worry, difficulties. Now, Waite wanted it to be a card of gaiety. So I think if you study the old meanings of tarot, and if you look at the Rider Waite Smith, you see quite a lot of instances in which Pamela Coleman Smith very brilliantly combines contradictory traditional meanings of a card. So in the case of the Two of Pentacles, it means both gaiety and embarrassment and embroilment. An embarrassment meaning I've got my arms full. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm de choix, you know. And it's just not true to say that Pamela made up that, that meaning. For example, the Five of Pentacles, it traditionally means companionship and hardship. And Waite complained that you, there was no possible uh, way of marrying these two meanings. But yet Pamela sat down and married the two meanings. So weirdly, 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 ladies and gentlemen, I think Mary Kay Greer, who is the one proper tarot expert writing in this book, actually sells Pamela Coleman Smith short. So um, get this book. They say it's going out of print. It's a fantastic coffee table book. It's got a lovely cover. The cover is, in fact, the best thing about it, I think. I think you could frame the book and hang it on your wall and then you would really be, you know, you could have Pamela as your household deity. So that's all from me, your grumpiest book reviewer. I'll come back to this book later and I want to review it in conjunction with some other strange Pamela Coleman Smith books like that one and another one which is even, even weirder. But for now, have a lovely week and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye. You have undone my heart and placed a thorn in every part. Though I have known a blood red moon and the bright sun eclipsed at noon, I never dreamed that I would see such irregularity.